Hi, I'm Paul Mendoza. Uh, I've been training martial arts for about 27 years. Um, I'm the owner and uh, of Dynamic Mixed Martial Arts and Fitness here in Modesto, California. Um, we just opened a new facility. Uh, Dynamic Martial Arts, though, has been open for about 15 years. I uh, was teaching for an, another uh, mind instructor here in town. His name is Ken Polite. And um, when I was about 25, I, I went on my own, opened my own squad in my garage. I uh, started with about 15 students, and um, now we just recently opened up um, our new facility, which is about 8,200 square feet. And it is probably, well, it is, it's probably the biggest, uh, if not the biggest, school in Central Valley. It's uh, 8,200 square feet. It has uh, four training areas, uh, 27 heavy bags. Um, we have elliptical trainers, a cardio section that has treadmills, flat screen TVs. We have a weighted area that uh, consists of dumbbells, kettlebells, a bench press. We have a fitness class that involves um, how I've trained coming up in martial arts and boxing and kickboxing that incorporates all aspect of, uh, of those arts but more fitness not fighting. It's non-contact, excellent workout. We have about 100 members there just in that alone. Um, we have a karate program that uh, consists of a Shudokan karate. That's my style I've studied in for the last uh, 27 years. I have instructors that teach that, um, and that program consists of teenagers um, all, all the way down to you know children. Um, we also have a Muay Thai program that we started under the uh, Master Toddy Association, and uh, we have instructors that certify through him to teach traditional Muay Thai. Um, we also have a boxing class that you know I teach also. I teach pretty much everything, but um, I have instructors to help me out. Um, so we have a boxing Muay Thai class. Also, I've been involved in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, training with the legendary instructor, Half Gracie, for the last 10 years. So I'm a, a Gracie student. So we have Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu here. Um, I train MMA fighters, uh, professional MMA fighters, as well as amateur MMA fighters. So we have an MMA program here also. We have um, uh, a really nice pro shop. People come in and uh, you know get clothing. Um, and I think I started uh, this school because when I was a young black belt, I always wanted to uh, know everything in martial arts. I studied everything from Tai Chi to, to Aikido to Kung Fu and I just was really hungry for knowledge. I wanted a place where someone can go and learn a little bit of everything. I'm not looking for you know the next Black Belt World Champion. I'm not looking for the next Chuck Liddell. All I'm looking for is people who love the art and uh, want to train and uh, want to take up something that maybe I hope that I can inspire them to be you know martial arts themselves and, and if this place does it you know that's great. Well, number one, um, uh, I always have room for somebody whether they uh, can pay or don't pay. You know, if they, um, obviously, and it's a business, and I, I need to make money, and uh, I need to feed my family and, and keep the business running. Um, but you know, somebody gave me a shot. Um, you you talk, you can talk to five different people and get you know five different answers. Um, I think people who know me uh, in the, from the past, uh, my aggressiveness and my disregard for my body. Um, I think if you ask some of the newer generation of, of kids that are out there fighting, I think it's my strategy and my, uh, my cunningness and, and, and my ring smarts. Um, I think the one that really uh, got me was in 2001, um, I was in a serious motorcycle accident. Uh, a, a car pulled out, a truck pulled out in front of me. I hit the truck uh, head on and um, uh, I was actually uh, dead for um, maybe, I don't know, maybe they said maybe it was a minute, maybe. Um, I was in the hospital for maybe uh, about a week or so. Um, I was in a wheelchair for about six months and um, uh, couldn't cut my own food. I couldn't, you know, shower by myself. Uh, my, my wife had to pretty much almost do everything for me. Uh, people had to come watch me in shifts. And, um, uh, and I couldn't really, I didn't feel like a man. I couldn't protect my family if I had to. Um, and it really put things in perspective. Um, when I was a young fighter, um, I, I always thought that I wanted to be known for being, you know, a tough fighter. You know, I always wanted people to respect me for being, you know, uh, just, you know, outstanding, you know, fighter. Paul can, you know, win this and win that. And, and um, uh, but I think now when I look, look at what I want to do now is uh, that's not what I want people to know me for. I think now what I want people to say um, his first, that Paul was a good husband, he was a good daddy, and uh, he was a good martial artist. Um, well, as a martial artist, that keeps me grounded is that uh, it's real simple. You know, I've trained with some of the best fighters, 
you know, and I, I fought some of the best fighters who ever put their gear on. Um, at the same time, I've trained with some of the with some of the best fighters out there. I mean, um, I really didn't get humbled as much uh, as I did as, as I walked there. I walked into um, my jujitsu teacher's uh, Hal Gracie's studio, so I always thought I was a good fighter. And I met a man. I was never afraid of any person. I, I've, I fought giants, you know, uh, before, and and uh, been hit by trucks and you know people that had sledgehammers, you know, for fists. And um, and I've never been afraid of fighting. But I met a person who wasn't much bigger than me. There was nothing I can do. And um, he humbled me to the point of I felt like a baby in his arms, you know, because there was absolutely nothing I could do. And I, and, and I, I had the uh, really uh, great experience to, to start training with uh, uh, BJ Penn, who is, uh, uh, you know, everybody knows BJ Penn, UFC champion. Me and him started jiu-jitsu together. Um, I trained him for three years, and um, I trained with uh, him and, and a lot of outstanding MMA fighters, MMA coaches out there. Um, so what kept me grounded as a martial artist is, man, I, I think I realized that there's probably a million people like me. You know, there's probably a million black belts out there who who have great schools and, and who have obstacles. And and uh, I don't think that, um, I'm, I'm not, don't think I'm a super person, a superman. You know, uh, you know, I, I think I'm grounded because I've met people who are way better than me, you know, and, uh, and that's, I think, you know, the problem is when people think that they're at the top of the list, you know, when they think they're at the top, that's when usually they're not. Everybody in my house trains, you know, my wife comes in, she's hitting my bag, uh, she's out there hitting bags, uh, my daughter comes here and she's calling numbers off for me. Um, everybody in the house has to be involved because if one person in the house is not in the circle, then the boat don't go, nothing floats. Uh, and like I said before, the only reason I've done what I've done is because everybody in my house uh, is along for the ride. It's obvious that your love for the martial arts is the reason why you're doing this and for no other reason. And um, because of that, you know, I think, you know, uh, uh, people are going to be inspired, maybe not by me, but I'm sure you know, by, you know, by you.